wow. Okay. That was there we loud. go. <laughs> so, um, let's get into it. Uh, yeah, I think we we uh, we were at the AUR package last time. Yep. Right. Um, anything from them? Uh, I just told them. Yeah, uh, you, yeah. But they didn't respond back. So let's. No. Label this. Yeah, as I would say it's. Uh, for user. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. That's on them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Agree. Okay. So let's open up these. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Um, uh, I, think I want to also I want to actually experiment with this a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I I want to uh, assert how much how large is of a job to invert the logic in, to prepend instead of append mm -hmm. because right right now we have markers in the file. Uh, yeah, uh, I know. If, if you and so it should be a little less. Of a concern if we append or prepend, because we either way we we just find the you know the markers and then delete or add based on that. So it may be doable, uh, but I want to ensure that we don't break anything, and yep. also that it works if we upgrade from the old logic to the new logic. Um, it may yeah. be like a small change, but we have to be really careful because we need to ensure that there is an upgrade path uh, that we don't mess up yeah. people's files. I agree. <laughs> um, I also thought a bit about this and maybe this is something we want to do for V1 of DevPod. Mm -hmm. um, and then instead of actually changing SSH config, um, maybe have an include statement there. Yeah, exactly. uh, and then write to DevPod. Like that would probably be the nicest way. And then everybody who doesn't have a writable SSH uh, folder or standard .ssh folder can use the SSH config path yep. uh, option. But yeah. generally, like, I, I think the extra include file. Is, uh, is the best thing. Yeah, um, but you're right. I'm also pretty worried about what we could break uh, that I don't know of. <laughs> uh, I, I think I think what we uh, may do is a little you know um, deprecation uh, period uh, mm -hmm. maybe around the point I don't know eight <laughs> or something like that where we have we support the old files mm -hmm. in the deletion part mm -hmm. but we do the new thing in the um, creation part mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. this way, like uh, physiologically, right? Uh, recreating the various containers, old uh, configuration will be migrated to the new one without the user even noticing. So then when we remove the old uh, configuration style, we don't have any problems. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the best thing. So a smooth do. transition instead yeah. of just like, <laughs> up, up, screw you, yeah. <laughs> it's breaking now. <laughs> I, I mean, we are at 0 0.5, so we can still say screw you, but it's exactly. not ideal. No, uh, I, yeah, it, it's nice. For something like that, we, we, yeah. can, we can do like a migration part. We can even just say, hey, run this command like, uh, yeah. I don't know, devpod migrate configs. Do whatever. you know if this tool that we're using for the upgrades, um, is this baked into Cobra? Or what exactly do we use for the upgrade command? Um, and if uh, you can I, I, run uh, post upgrade migrations or something like this. I need to check up because uh, I um, didn't actually um, fiddle with the DevPod one. I mm -hmm. did with the DevSpace one. And I don't know if mm -hmm. DevPod is using the same I think uh, so. Thing. Yeah, it should use the same. Uh, one. But he, yes, uh, it's ju just like uh, some sort of go thing that you run, so you can do post stuff. So yeah, maybe that's something actually that we could do. Yeah, we can actually call part of DevPod itself. So probably we we can create like a migration command, and yeah. then in the upgrade yeah. we call yeah it. we do it, and then we still. 
show it in the release notes. Now that we have proper release notes yeah. flow and it shows up in the UI, everybody should be aware of this. We can make it pretty big. Yeah, yeah. that sounds like a plan to me. I'm quickly going to mm -hmm. update the linear tick. Oopsie doopsie, what the fuck? Why did I stop shit? <laughs> Never mind. Um, what's the ticket for this? You cannot connect. Uh, on linear, please. There we go. It's in triage right now. I'm going to put it into backlog. Yeah. yeah. For to do, and let's look at it in two cycles. So, beginning of March. Um, okay. It will be a large one for sure. But I do agree with them that it's um, not great if they try it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the if we uh, think about it, it's like the only problem is actually just VS just <laughs> quotes uh, VS Code because uh, when we use VS Code um, SSH URL, mm -hmm. uh, we cannot specify SSH uh, flags, right? Because for everything else, like for uh, remote VS Code or with uh, JetBrains, stuff like mm -hmm. that, we can actually specify, hey, use that configuration file. So we have mm -hmm. our own configuration file without the user needing to mm -hmm. um, have stuff in their own configuration file. Mm -hmm. But uh, then VS Code doesn't work. <laughs> so yeah, I we... still think it's fine to have the include statement in the main yeah. SSH config. Yeah, I think it's okay. Like, I, yeah, um, I, this also makes it, it easier to just work out of the box and not yeah. worry we about just the need config to if you don't want to get into it. We just need to ensure that the include is prepended or we have yeah. we left the same <laughs> right. problem as this issue. <laughs> right. Ah, uh, man, I, I was... When when they brought this up, I quickly did a man SSH config, and I really want to read through the whole thing uh, to understand <laughs> what the side effects are, because this is uh, somewhat of a, I don't know, vague area to me. Anyway, um, I think we have an action plan. Probably going to do it in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Let's keep this ticket up until then. Um, Next up. Oh, yeah, this guy. I just... Um, okay, uh, glad it works for them. Um, because I just tried this this morning with G Cloud and I mm -hmm. could easily machine SSH. Yeah, I can. I, I used um, AWS and Azure and it also works correctly. Mm. So I think that's uh problem within between mm -hmm. the keyboard and the chair and it looks like it um and also said it's actually command in front um i suspect that you i'm just gonna get back to that no operating system yeah i think it's just a matter of communication yeah Okay. Uh, the machine created from CLI does not respect the activity. Oh yeah, we asked them for more details. Uh, okay. Um. So it's the AWS provider. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the AWS provider is always a bit, um, let's say strange on the, um, yeah, I'll show you what's the it may have problems. Uh, if you go, yeah, package. Um, yeah, package. just quickly want to do in activity. It's yeah. defined and it's on the agent. <coughs> yeah. Um, the the pro problem is the inactivity timeout. Um, when we when it runs, yeah. um, it calls the shutdown using the um, instance profile. Now the problem is if they created it with 
an older version of the AWS provider, which didn't have the, the, the instance profile, mm -hmm. the shutdown comment can fail because we are not actually calling shutdown dash H now. Mm -hmm. We are actually calling AWS APIs to H, mm -hmm. shutdown, mm -hmm. the, uh, mm -hmm. terminate the instance. Problem is, we could do the shutdown <laughs> like we do with all other providers. The problem mm -hmm. is that uh, AWS is very strange when you shut down the Linux machine, the instance doesn't shut down and you are getting billed for it. Oh, right. I think I I think I experienced this before when I was playing yeah. around. You I'm not super familiar with build. AWS. I, I try to stick to G Cloud whenever I can and not get into AWS mm -hmm. business. Um, they, they have okay. some sort of abstraction of some I don't know. Yeah, they, yeah, they, I that see. doesn't work in the in detecting that the machine is actually shut down. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So we migrated the shutdown logic from this to the uh, using the instance profile. Mm -hmm. Now the what I can see that may be a problem is a they are using their own instances, mm -hmm. so that won't work mm -hmm. because we need the instance profile. B, they're using an old instance and then they upgraded the provider. Mm -hmm. So the instance was not created with an instance profile. Mm -hmm. So we we will we will need to provide either a migration path or do we just ask them to recreate it <laughs> and it should out fix by itself. Okay, can, can uh, you get back to them? Using, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, can you uh, show me again? The uh, number? Yep, I think it's this one right here. I'm going to send it to you. It's like, there you go. I know one. Um, basically, with this explanation, then I think they can, yep. they yep. can decide what they want to do with that. Um, Perfect. And you, you were about to say a... Um, or propose a solution for this? Yeah, I mean, a solution, uh, first of all, we need to check uh, what's the situation with the provider. Effectively, we don't have like a way to know which provider version created this machine. That's right, um, but this is something we could store from now on, yeah. at least. Yeah, I think that's, Probably something that we want with all providers. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking the same, and maybe this is something we are actually storing right now. Give me a no, sec. No, I don't think we don't because no, I don't think because the agent gets updated by the injection, the injection script, right? So that one uh, is always you... updated. But we uh, do store it. In on your machine. Mm. So, Are you and sure? the agent I, is always in sync sure. with the version you have after you ran the next command. Yeah. So we can take the provider JSON we have on your machine and do something with it. Mm. But anyway, what I would do is, uh, but if they updated the provider, and the machine was created like with provider 001 That's true. and then yeah. upgraded we, we to can't know. we don't know. Yeah. But this so is what like, we can do for me, is... this is up to the provider to track. Yeah, exactly. To track the uh, machines it created with which version. But we I do think track we, the provider. We can, do, we can open uh, a broad issue uh, in which we update the provider to actually tag their resources with the yep. version of the provider yep. and the version of DevPod maybe, yep. uh, which yep. was uh, created by then. So in the future, if, I mean, the provider yeah. are still version zero, zero something. So yeah, breakage is acceptable, I think. Yeah, um, I agree. Uh, but in the future, when we, when we will have some sort of, I don't know, version one, we will want to have an upgrade path so if we migrate from, I don't know, provider V1 to provider V2, we need to know uh, if the, uh, the yep. resource was created yep. with provider V1. So we will need to add this stuff. 
um, with common metadata. So mm -hmm. first up, uh, uh, provider version, yep. um, dev pod version. Do we need something else? Anything you're interested in? Maybe creation times. Our uh, creation time time timestamp is usually in the resource itself. Yeah. Uh, I think I think it's okay, but we we can think about it. I, I would yeah, say let's, we can I, I'm going to open the Let's start with this. Uh, we yeah. can also once we have the mechanism in place, and it's quite easily. Yeah. Yep. Extendable. So put this into right now. I don't know. Where the only thing that I look uh, that I don't like about it is that we have to update every single provider. Yep. Mm. Anyway, I will I will say that I get this uh from the triage and I try to reproduce it. Maybe it's it can also be that there is some sort of, you know, um, change in the APIs and we don't know. Yep, um, might be. But you get back to them, right? <clears throat> you try to triage it. Do you have the ticket assigned to you already? Uh, no, I'm go just... getting it. Left foot machine mm -hmm. created. Um, do you want to handle this this cycle? Uh, because uh, yeah. Is... yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Move it here. Uh, where is Let's this go. Yeah. Okay, you did. Okay, dokey. Uh, yeah. No, he's um absolutely right about this, and we no, do. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will the design skills. Leave are... it like this. <laughs> 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 uh, anyway, I think this one um is in the same ballpark of UI work that we need to do for the sub part. Yeah, it's a one hundred percent. We need basically a way to specify commit branch subpath or pull exactly. request in the UI. And 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 then the just the I don't know the UI Rust backend will just put the URL together and that's it. Yeah, it um, be quite yeah. usable um, like this. Yeah. I was thinking about uh, you know having some sort of drop down that you can use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I feel like having it with good performance so that you can fetch the branches. You can fetch. It's. Uh, I, it's I think it's mm -mm. too much. What I, I mean, we can do, and we're also somewhat doing this in some areas, but it's currently opt in. We can do an LS remote. Or uh, just yeah. fetch the refs and see if there's something useful from there. But still, we'd have to benchmark this for big mono repos. Yeah, if exactly. It's, if it's That's actually feasible, feeling. or we can say, "Oh, I forget the command where you can actually check how big a repo is," and then, depending on that, we could define a threshold, mm -hmm. um, maybe. But I would like actually, I would just go with a nice UI plain text field first, yeah. and and that just like does or, or hides the add branch at SHA syntax under the hood, but you still have to specify it manually. And then um, in the next cool. step, we can think about ways of, perf in a performant way, yes. um, give you suggestions for this. Uh, we can merge or link this to the other issue so we yep. do it all in once. That sounds uh, good. Is, um, uh, issue it's funny that the... he asked for this. Uh, at the same time, it's actually being designed. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it is good. It links to dark side specify branch. Uh, gonna mark uh, as duplicate. Do you know the other one? Uh, two eight five four. Two eight five four. Mark as duplicate. Great. Does it close it? Um, there I go. Hopefully not. <laughs> Hopefully not. <coughs> I love the <laughs> um wait where where is my what the fuck? I don't know. Sometimes in Arc, if you command click mm -hmm. into a new link mm -hmm. and then navigate back, it just closes the tab and you can't navigate back back or navigate yeah. forward anymore. Um 
I was about to say, uh, uh, I, I lost the alternative the, uh... solution. <laughs> Google Dev for Dev documentation, then in the good documentation, Google branch. <laughs> At least it's documented now. Hey, Carlos, that's an improvement. Um, okay, Oops. this couldn't happen. Question uh, is, mm, let's are see. you running it with mm. DevPod? Wow. Arm? Wait, wait, wait. They're using arm and arch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious which laptop they're using. Um. Anyway, yeah, it it for sure is an uncommon combination. But I was thinking, um, just to be sure, they're not running it with recreate. I hope. Oh, okay. Because, like, uh, it's That's a the... Docker provider, right? Yes, uh, it is the Docker provider, and I know for a fact we don't rebuild it. Mm because we actually like we have the image with the docker provider on that machine mm -hmm. so unless you ca we can't find the image metadata then we should we build it yeah. but i can try like i have it i'm working on this area anyway so i will just try this in a second mm -hmm. um cool. uh, if you can reproduce on mac uh ping me we can yeah then uh, i will ping you or i'm gonna find i'm gonna in install arch linux i mean there is uh Asahi Linux for the Macs, so and it works oh, quite well actually. Um, uh, Dev container with feature gets uh, feature feature gets rebuild. Okay, I will check this out. By the way, I finally got around to fix this um, bug that recreate didn't work properly. Uh, and it's literally a one-liner. There's a PR <laughs> for it. Cool. Um, okay. Let me check. The only thing why that never, or the only reason why it didn't work is if you have a machine <coughs> provider, we never mm -hmm. refetch the new content of your resource. Uh, so yeah. basically, we do rebuild, but with the stale um, repository. Yeah. <laughs> so it's always the same. Yeah. Okay, luckily, I'm going to get to that. Um, no, Digital Ocean Provider, don't do this to me. Uh, I mean, the what I see is that yeah. their machine is not reachable. <laughs> uh, yep. Um, but um, we've been seeing kind of similar problems where there was a bit of a race condition. Uh, no, mm. But okay, okay, no, this doesn't look like it. Yeah, it's uh, it's just it's not reachable. Does not look like it. Also, they're using uh, one password to manage the SSH agent, so which which is something that I don't know how it works actually, and I uh, don't know yeah. if we support anything like that because we actually like forward the SSH agent, but if the SSH agent is one password, uh, I don't know if we support this at all. Hey, this sounds like this is the problem, though, because they can create a machine, mm -hmm. but then they can't. Why is it here? This looks to me. So the, the injection works. The in and exactly. The injection inject works. The connection arrow. doesn't work. Yeah. I mean, connection refuse this. Mm. Connection refuse can be also just they don't actually have like SSH running probably, or it's in a custom. Uh, but I don't know, but we're using. No, we're not. Just a second.
I don't know. Um, I I do think it is probably, or it has to do with the one password. Oh, because uh, oh. in the second attempt, um, if you see, yeah, he just used the SSH key directly. Yeah. Um, which goes ahead, but then it's connection refused, which actually means that it's not reachable or it's a connection refused. So, um, need to check. But this is like happening probably. inside of the Digital Ocean CLI. This is mm -hmm. what I'm like. To be honest, I didn't work on the DigitalOcean provider. I think that's the one of the few that I didn't do. Do we have a uh, activation for provider digital ocean? I also like very rarely use that. Um, we probably have a client here. Yeah. Uh, they do. Okay, so they have a Go library. Mm -hmm. So we're not using that. So maybe there's actually something in the provider, but maybe we I, need to, I'd have to check something. this out. I haven't used a digital ocean provider in a while. So no, me neither. I think that's probably, yeah. One of the two providers that they didn't do. Mm. Terraform like this provider. One all, I've also never touched. Ah, oh, yeah, there is a Terraform provider. So three <laughs> providers. <laughs> we do have way too many providers. Um, that's good. <laughs> It, it it is good, but I'm I really want to see the numbers on how many people are actually using them. Uh, yeah, we need to polish the. Yep. Or I need to find that to. out. Yeah. By the way, I will get I'm to this telemetry sure that, that stuff later on today. The GCP one. Hmm? And the doc. I I'm pretty sure the most used one will be the Kubernetes Docker and GCP. Yep, one hundred percent. And AWS is probably third. Hmm. I see f too few uh, issues from AWS provider. So either it works incredibly well or no one is using <laughs> it. <laughs> um, speaking of which, uh, let's go through the provider repos real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, nope, nope, nope. Which uh, I need to check why I'm not receiving notifications from it. Uh, yeah, me neither. January 15th. Um... We'll look into it. And you oh, yeah. Uh, I remember the Dockerless provider problem. <coughs> they faced. When I get to mm -hmm. that, I think it's already assigned to you. Uh, probably, yes, but I don't see the cycle. Uh, yeah, it's in triage right now. I'm going to put it into to-do in two cycles, if it's great. Uh, to be honest, okay. I would put it into backlog. Um, the Dockerless provider right now is... Pretty much in use, yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I still want to investigate that. Mm -hmm. uh, probably some context time. What did we do? Yep, yep, still on my plate. Uh, nothing, that's great. Kubernetes. Ooh, actually, oh, yeah. yeah. Some... What you can do this. Good, sir. Maybe I should give them an example. Um, be right there. Mm. I always forget the syntax for uh, 
paints. Yeah. It's like I use it so rarely. Um, mm -mm. And with rarely, I mean never. <laughs> there we go. <coughs> I feel for GitHub <laughs> being a code related tool. They should really but, build a Vim yeah. option into their um <laughs> there is an extension for Firefox and Chrome. Yeah, I know there's also <laughs> there's this uh Neo, I think it's Neo Vim Chrome plugin. I don't know if it's coming. Yeah, that's one, Vim. that one, I think. Yeah, Fire and Beam. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh which is pretty cool, but also I don't trust it that much. Uh and I want to <laughs> give it all of the control to read and write over my input fields. So <laughs> um great tolerations are in place there you go good sir close um okay that's not coming Talk in composing soon. kubernetes yeah i mean there is uh compose ah compose okay you know that they, they want to do docker compose files in kubernetes mm -hmm. and there's like this compose project that translates uh compose wow. files into uh kubernetes uh, deployments and yeah, services yeah. but maybe we can yeah. do this as experimental i don't know i'm i'm a bit hesitant on doing experimental stuff with a kubernetes provider especially for something that they can do exactly yeah that's right <laughs> <laughs> true but this way it's yeah it's more portable um like i like i don't want to for it to become like a super bloated thing that yeah. tries to do everything yeah that's right we should stick to what devpod does and then for the extras it's an extra that the user can do yeah um i still think it, there's an argument to be made to support docker compose files with kubernetes because it works everywhere else and just because and Kubernetes is basically the only provider that doesn't support it because it doesn't use Docker. Yeah, exactly. Uh, also, the Dockerless provider doesn't work. <laughs> True, Dockerless provider also doesn't support it. Um, okay, Dockerly. Uh, let's hit stop and hope nobody ever finds this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's. I think it, it wasn't too bad. Uh, no, yeah, yeah. We just go over tickets. Uh, it, it's just I always feel weird when I'm being recorded when I, when I talk. <laughs> anyway, the work is cut out for us, I yep. think. And anything else we need to talk about? Not from the side. Alexandru, anything from your side? Nothing from my side. Then this was a quick meeting. Maybe Luca, mm -hmm. 